We did that campaign in partnership with one of the um, hospitals in Chicago because we wanted to actually see what it was like to care for somebody in a moment of need. And then we opened it up to have people nominate people who could participate and have Sandro take their portrait. He, as it turned out, had also gone through cancer. So it was this kind of amazing thing that came together. So, you know, every job is great until it's not. And Hyatt was great, but when we didn't... <laughs> Sorry, I know you all know what I'm talking about. Um, when, and if you're a CMO, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Um, and then about two and a half years, I knew that probably it was time to leave Hyatt, and actually we were going to move back to New York, which was always our plan. I was interviewing for a role, and that really sort of brings me to the point, which is that you can find meaning at work, but sometimes things change. And so three and a half years at Hyatt, and I was interviewing for a job, that was going to have me in New York. My son at this point was in 11th grade. I come back from that final meeting, and he looks at me. He's my nonverbal child at the time. And he says to me, Mom, I understand if you take this job in reverse commute. I just want you to know that I would miss you. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> OK. Um, and honestly, at that point, if I had really been honest with myself, which he forced me to be, I actually had heart palpitations about jumping right back in. I'd gone from a turnaround about four years at Gannett to Hyatt taking one day off, and that was a Saturday. I commuted for eight months until my family joined me, and then I would literally get on a plane and go to a meeting in Tokyo for 48 hours. That was my life. And so he sort of made me stop, and I made the decision that I was going to just take a break. And I um, recused myself from the job and actually went and gave notice and took a long leave. I did what I always do because I'm type A, I'm not good at sitting still. And so I went back to making lists, trying to figure out how to reconnect with the things that gave me joy. Things that, you know, I used to joke, I was an interesting person once, like I went to the movies. My jobs were interesting, I got to do interesting things, but I didn't get to just sort of be and pursue things that I'd been interested in. One of the things that gave me a chance to do was to reconnect with my family. I love this picture because the little woman all the way on the right, who's no longer with us, is my grandmother. She really helped raise me. And when I stepped away, I was able to move to California for three months in Venice Beach and actually spend time with her, which I'm really grateful for doing because she left us in the middle of COVID. And I got to do an oral history with her. I got to hike the hills and actually go to the Hollywood sign. Do you know how many times I've been to LA, I had never hiked up to the Hollywood sign, because who has time? I was always running from one meeting to the next. And I even got to go to Cuba with my husband, just for fun, not like, oh, come tag along to my, trip, my work trip with me. It was amazing. I also got to do things like agree to be the board chair of Reporters Without Borders. I cared about press freedom, so when they asked and I was on the board, I was able to step in. Journalism has obviously been a theme for me throughout my career. And in this period, I also decided to go back to trying to write, which really I hadn't done since I'd graduated from college. I do what all of us type A people do. I looked for the perfect writing class. In the end, I checked myself and just took the one that fit into my schedule. It was an episode of Community. But it got me to, um, it really was, it got me to um, writing again. And so I was sitting in Venice Beach with my grandmother, and a friend called. And she said, you've paused. That's so brave. What she was really saying is, you're really crazy. <laughs> and so in that moment of utter privilege, right, it was a privilege to be able to step aside sitting at the beach with my grandmother, I found myself writing a piece and sending it to the New York Times. I don't know, I think I have no shame. I just send things. I'm like, okay, here, it's a gift. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I mean, what made me do that? I don't know. A couple months later, the phone rings. I know, there's a theme here. The phone rings, and it's an editor from the New York Times. She says, if you haven't sold that story, we'd like to buy it from you. I'm like, yeah, what, sold the story? No. So that's what happens. I end up getting published in the New York Times, and I end up writing about pausing at the age of 50, which I know somebody mentioned yesterday. Um, and I did have a moment to say, like, am I really telling the world this? And I did. Pausing was the best thing that I ever did. And it really got me to this realization that life is a series of choices and chapters. I think that balance is such a fallacy. We're always juggling. You're just prioritizing different things in different points of your life. 